All right, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy, and in today's video, we are going to be taking a very, very early look at the 2021 season and exactly how I think it's going to pan out. Now, it is way too early to really be digging into these kind of predictions. I'm sure I'll be doing more of this kind of content as the season actually gets closer, but it's December and I'm definitely not doing this for views. Now, but in all seriousness, we do need something to fill the silences and obviously the draft is finished, the trade period's done, and we can start to have some conversations I guess about who we think is primed to make a flag assault in 2021. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe, like the video if you enjoy it, and also don't forget to check out our sponsors, manscaped.com. You get 20% off their products, so if you're looking for good Christmas ideas, don't forget to use our discount code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps or one word, for 20% off. But anyway, let's crack into the video. I'm going to start with the bottom, and in 18th spot, I've got the North Melbourne Footy Club. Now, we know as a club, they're pretty much in full rebuild mode under a new coach. Reece Shaw has obviously left the club under some unfortunate circumstances. They've got David Noble, and they have come out and said that they expect to be competing for a flag within three years. Having said that though, I think they're going to take the cautious approach and try and get games into the kids that they've just recruited. They've just taken a couple of early picks in uh, in particular Will Phillips early in the draft. They've gotten rid of some experience. Ben Brown was shipped out the door. Sean Higgins has joined Geelong and they've made a host of other delisting. So they cut the list really hard. They added Jaden Stevenson and a few other youngsters. But long story short, it's going to be getting games into the youth this year and as a result, Wooden Spoon for North. In 17th spot, I have got the Adelaide Crows, last year's Wooden Spooners, or this year's technically, who finished the season pretty strong. I think they won like three of the last four, or maybe even their three last games. We started to see the shoots of the future come through. Lockie Scholl had a late Rising Star nomination. You got Darcy Fogarty there, amongst a few others. Fisher Mackesy. With all that being said, though, they're still pretty early in their rebuild phase, and this year it needed to be a big draft for them, which it was. Again, I'm going to use a similar logic to North. They have so much youth on the list, they still need to develop Develop it. And as such, they're going to be giving games to young guys and probably not focusing entirely on winning games of football, which is why I've got them bottom two. In 16th spot, I've got a little bit of a surprise, or maybe not, the Hawthorne Footy Club after, you know, the oldest club in the league finished bottom four last year. It does still feel a bit weird to have the Hawks in the bottom four. That being said, looking at their list, they really needed to make it a lot younger going into 2021, and that's what they've done. They made the draft a focus. Isaac Smith joined Geelong, and ultimately they're looking to add some talented youth around what is already a pretty good core, particularly in the midfield. To add injury to insult, though, James Sicily is out for all of next year, I believe, tearing his ACL later in the season. I've got them still finishing bottom three, despite that really good core of midfielders that I said they've got. What they really need to do is obviously develop youth and consolidate their depth, which I think is lacking right now. Rounding out my bottom four, maybe a little bit of a surprise, but I've got the Gold Coast Suns slightly shuffling back into that bottom four. Now, this isn't really a comment on where I think they're at as a club because I think they've made really good strides. And I said in a podcast recently, I think this is probably the best talent-based Gold Coast has ever had. However, I do think they're going to fall back slightly because, you know, last year was a shortened season. With shortened games, they've got an extremely young side. And as a result, they're not going to be able to run out games quite as effectively this year compared to 2020. Now, some of the youth on their list is scary, and they've added Elijah Hollands, a top seven pick from this year. And believe me, I do think Gold Coast is a, in a great position to push for a future finals assault. However, I don't think it's going to be this year. They're still a year or two away. Maybe they'll explode in 2022. In 14th spot, I've got the Sydney Swans. And I must say, I don't really like this pick because I do think there's a lot of reasons why Sydney will jump up the ladder. You had a whole heap of senior players miss footy last year. You had Buddy, you had Rampy, you had Heaney and Hewitt all missed considerable chunks of football, which would have contributed to a bottom two finish. I think it was bottom three in the end. Again, I was saying recently, I think Sydney have some of the best youth in the league in terms of the core that they've added together over the last, I guess, three to four years, even going back to Isaac Heaney in 2014. I'm really confident this group will get together and do something special over the coming years. But for me, it's just a little bit hard to see them jumping up too high next year, considering how young these players are. Adding two top five picks in this year's draft, I think they're very close to finishing their rebuild but they just need time to mature. Next up, I got 13th spot, and this will hurt some of you, the Melbourne Footy Club, and you D's fans are going to hate me for this. 2020 was a positive step for them. I think it was good for them to recover the ground they lost in 2019, which was disastrous and largely due to injury, I guess. Now, I fully acknowledge how good this team can be on its day. I guess for me, it's just a little too unreliable to completely back 
in 2021, especially when I'm considering the teams around their range, I'm a little bit more confident that they'll put it together. Their best footy in 2020 was pretty decent, but their worst football was absolutely terrible. And if you told me the D's are gonna finish top six in the coming season, I'd probably go, I can see it, but I can also see them plummeting back to around about 13th. I know that one's gonna attract some negative attention in the comment section, but you know what? I just didn't feel good about putting them higher than some of the other teams I'm about to mention. Next up, we've got Carlton, and every year they're pegged to you know rise up the ladder and cause some damage, but this is the year I'm probably most confident that that's gonna happen, largely due to their outstanding trade period where they added two really good running defenders in Zach Williams and Adam Saad. Now they've got a very sound back line and extra run out of defense with those two guys, which was probably previously a weakness, especially when you consider Cade Simpson has left the club. The midfield is young, albeit fairly raw, although the forward line is probably where it falls down for me with Charlie Curnow obviously being a huge question mark. For me, they're a team that's kind of similar to Fremantle, who I'll get to shortly. They've got talent in the middle and the back of the ground, but the score power is the big question mark for me and that's what I think will hold them slightly back in 2021. In 11th spot, I've got the Fremantle Dockers, and I kind of think they're a little bit of a smoky to play finals this year. They're a team that's perpetually ravaged by injury, which is frustrating because some of their experienced players are very, very good, but haven't quite had the opportunity to prove themselves. Someone like an Alex Pierce comes to mind. But in the absence of some of those players, we saw some young midfielders in particular take massive strides, and I think that organic growth will continue in 2021. Finally, they've got some midfield support coming through. Chera, Brayshaw, and Saron can well and truly hold their own these days. The back line, when fully fit, is definitely definitely up there with some of the better ones in the league, but like Carlton, their scoring power, especially now that they've given up on Jesse Hogan, is looking pretty trash. I think they're good enough to knock off some good teams in 2021 to get a few people talking, but ultimately the lack of scoring power means they don't quite play finals for me. In 10th spot, I've got another one that will burn a few of you, the Western Bulldogs, despite what people are saying is one of the better trade periods had by any club. I'm not really saying this with any full emphasis, but I just have a funny feeling the dogs are gonna have a little bit of a down year this year. I've talked about it in other videos. They didn't make as much of their trade period as what others are suggesting. Sure, the trading for value was great, but they added a midfielder into what was probably an overpopulated midfield to begin with. In terms of talent, they've got one of the strongest midfields in the league, but you already had someone like Josh Dunkley on the outer and forward line and back line probably remains a little bit of a weakness for that club. We've seen that an elite midfield on its own doesn't quite get the job done. And even with the addition of pick one, Jamara Ugal Hagen, he's just a kid. So I'd be surprised if he's making too much impact in his first season. Again, this is a surprise. It's a big call, but I'm gonna say the dogs missed the finals and finished 10. In ninth spot, I've got a club that people I think are unfairly writing off. That's the Essendon Footy Club. Now their off season wasn't ideal. They had three players leave the club in Adam Saad, Joe Danaher and Orazio Fantasia. Out of those three, Adam Saad is probably the most significant loss. Frankly, I think their list is actually better than it's made out to be and injuries really had their impact in the 2020 season. That being said, they're an inconsistent side and with a new coach, there's no reason to think that's necessarily gonna change this year. I think they're good enough to play finals, but there's teams I'm more confident about and that is why the Dons sit in ninth spot for me. In eighth spot, I've got the 2019 Grand Finals, the GWS Giants sliding into my top eight after a really bad year in 2020 with some inner club turmoil. But for me, even with Jeremy Cameron and Zach Williams, etc., leaving the club, they've still got one of the strongest teams in the league. For me, it's about having a mental shift, getting that culture back sorted and that confidence back even in someone like Stephen Cornelio, who was one of the best players in the league a couple of years back, obviously got dropped at the back end of 2020. So these guys return to form. GWS is a very good side. I'll back them in to play finals this year. And to be honest, I'm not writing them off as a premiership chance as well. In seventh spot, I have got the St. Kilda Footy Club. Now, suffice it to say, this is one of the biggest surprise teams in the 2020 season. Obviously coming off a long rebuild at I think it'd be nine years in between finals. They had a good injury run this year and they've got a great young team. And they not only played finals, but they won one as well. They went from being one of the most injury hit clubs a couple of years back to one of having one of the better injury runs this year. And they also reinvented their side with five best 22 recruits and they've added probably two again this year. In particular, I'm talking about Brad Crouch and Jack Higgins, who are two best 22 players on talent, you'd have to say, and they're right in that right age bracket. St. Kilda have recruited very, very well. That being said, despite a fantastic season last year, I expect them to stay around the mark. I just don't have them leapfrogging some of these other big teams quite yet, but they will be a team to watch for many years. They could be on the verge of something special. In sixth spot, I've got the Collingwood Footy Club, who it has to be said, 2020 was absolutely shit house for them. On field, it didn't go to plan. Eighth spot is an underachievement for where that list actually is in talent, in my opinion. They had a rough run with injury and obviously some fixed congestion as well. I've talked about it. I think they copped a rough deal there. Then of course, they had the trade period from hell where they had to get rid of Adam Trelaw and Jaden Stevenson. 
largely due to salary cap, I would say, and obviously the way they handled it, they got slaughtered in the media for it. So there's gonna be maybe a potential impact there on the club. Whether or not this PR disaster is gonna impact them on field, who's to say at the moment, I'm gonna assume not. Judge them on talent. And frankly, I think Collingwood is far too good to finish much lower than six. They'll be satisfied to some extent that they can add use to their list. They had five top 31 picks in the recent draft. And on top of that, I think they've been adding good quality youth for a number of years now. So I think they're in a good spot. I think if we get a normal season, they have a better injury run. Collingwood are an outside chance of the flag. In fifth spot, I have the reigning premiers, the Richmond Footy Club. And this is a massive call because Richmond are clearly still the best team in the comp. Maybe this is more hope than my actual brain doing the thinking here. But it's not coming Coming from a place of disrespect, it's more I'm wondering along the lines of Richmond always time their season really well where they come good at the end of the season. I wonder if this year is the year that they don't quite crack that top four. They're an absolute champion team. Even if they do finish fifth, I'd still probably have them as the premiership favorite. But a champion run has to come to an end at some point. And it would be kind of a boring video if I said Richmond win the flag. So I'm gonna say they finish fifth, but still go deep in finals. Next up, we have got a little bit of WA bias, the West Coast Eagles. That's right, I'm backing my boys to finish back in the top four. Look, you can call it bias if you want. Maybe I am overrated. But frankly, someone's got to because I think they're unfairly harshed in a lot of predictions at the moment. People are tipping us to slide out of the top eight because, you know, we're old and we went out in the first week of the finals. Look, I get that argument, but I do think if you still look at the players the Eagles have. I've done a video recently on where I think the Eagles are at. Now, obviously, there's some flaws in the game plan. The midfield mix wasn't quite right in 2020, but in personnel, they definitely have a chance to go top four. Frankly, they were so close to making top four both this year and last year anyway, so it's not really too much of a rise. I think the Eagles will be relevant again in 2021. Again, maybe that is more hope than head, but I think it's a fairly solid argument. In third spot, I've got the Port Adelaide Footy Club, who again, like St. Kilda, were probably one of the biggest shocks during 2020 for how well they performed. I think people thought they might've been an outside chance for the top eight. And what they did was go and win 14 out of 17 games to finish top of the ladder. It's hard to go top twice in a row. So I'm tipping them to slide back a little bit. I don't really have a strong argument for why they'll slide back too far. I guess you could say maybe they rely heavily on some experienced veterans, someone like a Travis Boak or a Charlie Dixon, Tom Jones come to mind. So if those guys drop off, maybe Port Adelaide aren't quite as good, but what they do have going for them is that they've continually added young talent to their list over the last three drafts, I think they've taken eight top 25 picks, including guys like Dersma, Rosie, Butters, Mitch Georgiatis, some guys we haven't even seen yet. So long story short, I think they're in a good spot. I don't really see any reason why they won't contend again in 2021. In second spot, I have the mighty Brisbane Lions, who would in this case be finishing second three years in a row, although I'm sure if you offered that to them right now, they would take it. They obviously had a disappointing prelim where they got smashed by Geelong at home, but unlike last year, they at least won a final against Richmond, which was a fantastic game, and they've got more finals experience into what is a fairly young list still. They're another side where heaps of their best talent is still on the right side of 25, not to mention their top end talent like Harris Andrews, Lockie Neal and Charlie Cameron are not that old either. They're set up to have a very long premiership window as far as I'm concerned. They now added Joe Danaher to straighten them up to the forward line. I think Brisbane are as good a chance to win the flag as the last two seasons. Finally, there is one team left I haven't mentioned. You can probably work it out. I'm gonna back in the Geelong Cats to finish top of the ladder in 2021. Now, finally, I'm backing them. I'm not doing the cliche thing where we all tip them to slide because they're an old list, but the fact that I've tipped them to finish top means they are doomed to slide out of the finals. Again, they're a side constantly underrated because of how old they are, but you know, Chris Scott has come out and said they're adamant this group is going to win a flag. Now, they're a popular side to write off each year because they are an aging list, but Chris Scott has come out and said he really wants to win a flag with this group. They were very close to being premiers in 2020. Obviously, this is a grand final level squad at the very least, and they've probably had the biggest trade period haul out of anyone. They already had the best forward in the game this year in Tom Hawkins, and they've just added last year's Coleman medalist as well. So they've got the last two Coleman medalists in their forward line. They've added some great veterans in Smith and Higgins who are old, but will definitely still have an impact. They're going to be a hard team to shut down offensively. They got so many weapons, even with Gary Abbott leaving the side. If they get GMHBA gained back again, depending on how many that is, even though they lost one against Carlton in 2020, I do think they're gonna be hard team to beat. For me, I'm not putting anyone above the Cats. Which leads me to the grand final. I'm gonna say it's between first place, Geelong, at the MCG, hosting Richmond from fifth, They'll make the grand final despite finishing outside the top four, but I'm gonna say the Cats get the revenge and the Geelong Cats will be premiers for 2021 at this stage. Gary Rowan can have the Norm Smith medal. As for the Brown Light, I would have said probably Lockie Neal, unless Petrarca's team can win enough games because he actually got very close in 2020. As for the Coleman, I'm gonna say Jezza Cameron has a big year in his first year for the Cats. 
And I'm going to go boring for the rising star. Last year's pick one, Jamara Ugal Hagen, is going to be a star. But anyway, guys, that's all we got time for today. Let me know what you think in the comments of my predictions. Let me know your predictions at this stage as well. Make sure you check out my other channel, Cold World. We're going to be doing content over that over the summer. Otherwise, you know, we're going to be still be doing videos on True Footy, doing a redraft series, podcasts, all that stuff. We're going to keep it going. I've got a few little like documentary style videos. I did it one earlier this year on Adam Simpson. I've got a few little projects in mind. So hopefully there'll be plenty of good stuff to watch over the summer for you. And of course, it is pretty much the end of the year now. We're going to be doing a New Year's podcast, but I would like to say a huge thank you to all the support throughout 2020. I have gotten to know you guys and I feel like you guys have gotten to know me much better personally throughout this year on True Footy. And it's crazy to look back on what we were 12 months ago and what we are now. And I'm hoping we can do the same thing in 12 months looking back to now and think, shit, we are so much better than what we used to be. I appreciate the support, guys. Genuinely, it means the world to me. Hope you're all doing well, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.